Hello, everyone. Welcome to Online Seller UK podcast. My name is Prabhat, founder at Online Seller UK. And today we've got a really interesting topic, which is sponsored display ads. And I'm joined by Hannah, um, who has got really few years of experience with working with advertising campaigns and and so on. So, um, Anna, welcome to our podcast. Hi, nice to be here. Excellent. So I think it's good for, for you to introduce yourself, your company and your experience, and we'll take it from there. Yep. So my name's Hannah Whitlock. I'm the founder of Red Dog PPC. So we are an Amazon advertising agency based in London. Um, so been in the PPC space for a couple of years now. Um, I used to work at the aggregator SellerX. So, you know, learned a lot there as well. Um, but yeah, now we're running our own company and it's been going for, you know, trading for well over a year and a half now, I think. So yeah, getting there, <laughs> building up the client base in a, you know, kind of deep diving more and more into PPC. Yeah, absolutely. And before we were doing recording, we were talking about how dynamic Amazon ads are and um, uh, and, and uh, bringing to, to the display ads today. So it, it's not something many of us have tried. So let's start with talk to us what is amazon display ads so they're they're the ads that appear on amazon so they can appear on product pages they can appear on third-party websites so they're a really really good way of kind of targeting customers in other ways other than traditional search so usually you would kind of you know uh, go after certain keywords maybe follow other racings and you would just kind of appear in, in the search results or you'd have you know a branded video that you're trying to be seen on okay. certain keywords for but sponsored display allows you to target customers in a different way so you can target customers in a certain category you can target customers who have viewed your product maybe and not purchased or your competitor's product or who have viewed and purchased your competitor's products um so it, it's a really interesting way of trying to kind of retarget customers who have seen your ad competitor ads or um, maybe who have purchased from you so trying to kind of increase brand loyalty by trying to get people to repurchase um, again and again so they're a really like interesting form of ads obviously they've added sponsored display video now so that's kind of it's interesting because when they came out I know a lot of people were complaining about the video ads and you know, we had some clients where it took off straight away and then others where it was like spending an absolute fortune and doing nothing really. Well, nothing. Um, so, <laughs> but I think it's interesting, um, you know, they're becoming a little bit uh, more profitable now, I think. And, you know, sponsored display video ads I've seen have appeared at points in in the on the product detail page as well. So, you know, with a little kind of square um, ad is on a product detail page I've seen seen now a full video there so it's it's a really interesting way of um, communicating with your customers I think because you know with the sponsored display video especially there are things that you can do in those that you're not allowed to do in traditional sponsored brand videos so you know a key example of that would be the reviews so you can kind of you know obviously with, with the sponsored brand uh, videos they're quite strict on having any kind of like ratings or reviews in that video but with sponsored display video you can now do that so it's just another form of advertising to your customers really excellent so uh, uh, i've noted you mentioned about targeting people who's purchased or who's viewed so um so is there any right way to do it should we try both or when should we try either of them there's right and wrong ways for, for all brands, you know, <laughs> what works for one brand won't work for another. So, you know, I would say that some of the questions we ask brands, and obviously it's always different, but, you know, is this something that people will repurchase often? If it's something like maybe a cream or a perfume or, you know, something that people are going to use more on a daily basis and then kind of need to restock in three months, then, you know, I would say, retargeting based on um, purchases definitely you know trying to get people back in and testing different kind of uh, attribution windows obviously there's software and you know you can check in reports when when the best kind of retargeting periods are but then again you know if your product which maybe has a lot of competition so you and you know that people tend to you know, research your product and maybe buy it over the next couple of days, next couple of weeks, 
then you know retargeting people who have seen your products but not purchased or maybe your competitors products are not purchased you know it's it's a good way of retaining people who have seen you but it's also a good way of stealing from your from your competition as well and you know it, it just depends on your budget how aggressive you want to be um you know and sponsored display ads do tend to, to take a little bit longer to kind of get going and optimize so i'd say that it is really important for clients to use them but i would say that most accounts we kind of audit especially at the beginning are so sponsored product heavy you know maybe one or two sponsored brand ads but no one's really doing sponsored display as much as they should be in most cases so i would say yeah it really differs on on your brand but you know i think especially like with sponsored display video if you're a brand that has loads of customer reviews and testimonials and you know you can put that in a video then why wouldn't you be using sponsored display video on your competitors pages to try and draw people away you know but again if if your budget's really tight and you're you're not kind of ready for that ad you know i would say that sponsored display is a great addition to the sponsored products and sponsored brands and i think people quite often haven't mastered that and then they want to you know go all in on sponsored display and it's it's you know it <laughs> you got to kind of do it in the right order i suppose but um yeah I, i'd say everyone can find a use for sponsored display but it just depends on your brand and your goals and your customers really okay cool so thanks for explaining that so let's talk about um the 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 paying model so I believe there is paper impressions and is it paper click? So how does the display add? So you've got the CPM, which is the cost per mil. Um, okay. So you pay per a thousand views, basically. And that's a similar way to other kind of paid advertising. But, you know, traditionally, Amazon's always been cost per click. So, you know, if you're seen but not clicked on, you won't, you won't be charged. So I think... <laughs> The thing is, it, it, CPM can be really good for when you're trying to get a lot of eyeballs and you're trying to kind of push um, maybe visibility and brand awareness and, you know, just trying to, you know, kind of saturate a category or something with your ads. But often I would find that the, the most cost effective way or the safest method is CPC. Um, but then again, I, I would always advise people if they've got the budget to test it and maybe use CPM when they're maybe doing sponsored display category, something like that, where they're trying to kind of get the awareness in the category, because category. what you really want to do is have eyeballs on, on your ad, and then you can always retarget them. So you could always run a, you know, CP, um, CPM, yeah, <laughs> CPM ad um, in your category, and then use a CPC model to retarget people who have seen your product. So use the CPM to kind of get seen and then use the CPC to reel them back in. But it really depends on the brand, you know, and I think there's there's probably lots of arguments for using both. Sure, I'm sure. Um, okay, so uh, let's go on to the peak the selling period. So obviously a lot of, lot, of, lot of us have submitted the Prime Day deals already, which uh, was, you know, five, six days. It was 12th day or 12th May was the last due date day. Um, so we've already discounted products by large. Um, so does display ads play any role in this peak period like Prime Day or Christmas or any other seasonal part time? I think it's really interesting because what you see at these peak periods is obviously a lot more people on the platform. So obviously Prime Day, I think, has been a bit disappointing for sellers, maybe in, in recent history. But, you know, traditionally, you will see a lot more people on the platform you know, Prime Day, Christmas, you've got a lot more people there kind of clicking on products and viewing your products. Even if you're not running deals, even if you're, you know, let's just say you were a seller who wasn't, the amount of people or the amount of increase in people who are seeing your products, why would you not want to retarget them afterwards? You know, I think it's, it's a really interesting time period. And like, if you've been running deals and you've gotten loads of new to brand customers, then you want to be kind of bringing them on and kind of fostering the loyalty of those customers as well. If your product is something you can repeat purchase. So, you know, um, I don't know if I was selling a moisturizer maybe, and I got, you know, 
20% uplift on Prime Day in customers and I wanted to retain those customers, I would probably start retargeting quite aggressively with purchase retargeting on sponsored display uh, just to try and make sure that, you know, the whole reason of discounting things on Prime Day is to get that initial customer. Once you've got them, you know, you really should be doing everything you can to, to keep them in your kind of funnel. But, you know, yeah, I think you could use any sort of sponsored display ad in, in the time period. So if you wanted to just kind of get as much visibility as possible during Prime Day, you could be, uh, you know, targeting your competitors, people who have viewed your competitors' products and not purchased, or, you know, people who are viewing stuff in the category, um, you know, but obviously... The one thing I would always say to people about Prime Day is the margins can be tight. And, you know, if you are only just starting these sponsored display ads, they can be expensive. And for a lot of sellers, it doesn't make sense to go overboard on this. You know, it depends what your strategy is. Um, just be aware that this sort of strategy can cost, you know, quite a bit um, if it's last minute, especially. But I mean, it just depends what it's worth to you to get those new to brand customers and to retain them. You know, obviously you can see how often people repurchase and, you know, what it means if someone repurchases two, three times from you. So, you know, you can make your own mind up about your brand and whether you're willing to, to pay a bit more to acquire that first customer. That's great. Thank you for explaining that. So, and Right. So, um, yeah, good information, all good information you've given us. So that's really cool. So we're towards the end of this podcast. So if somebody's to find you, talk to you, discuss their ad strategy and even display ads, as we discuss, what is the best place to, where to go to find you? So, yeah, we've, we've got a website. So it's reddogppc.co.uk. You can always find me on LinkedIn. So Hannah Whitlock. Um, and we have just tried to launch a YouTube channel as well. So, you know, in the, I say try to because I keep fiddling around with the videos and <laughs> obviously just like, no, I don't want to put it out yet. Um, so in the next couple of weeks, we should have some more content there as well. So, you know, hopefully we will kind of cover topics. The aim is to cover topics in like five to 10 minutes for sellers who are really busy, but just want actionable strategies straight away. So that's that's kind of the point of the channel. Excellent. Thank you again, Hannah, for your time. I'll speak to you soon. All the best. Bye.